As a college president, I'm regularly bombarded with questions about the supposed higher education bubble. The expression the higher education bubble is largely an outgrowth of the manifestation of the dramatically increased uh, loan balances that exist for higher education, uh, balanced up against the, both the debt load and the presumed difficulties of folks graduating from higher education being able to find productive work in the marketplace. Uh, and a simple phrase, bubble, allows us to capture all sorts of things underneath that, uh, assuming that we actually understand what's really going on. It's a dramatic oversimplification of reality in a variety of different ways, and I just thought it might be worthwhile to explain why. First of all, uh, you cannot capture higher education as an industry within one logic. Uh, there are a whole portfolio of elite higher education institutions, largely financed through their endowment activities. There are tuition-dependent institutions like Babson. There are public institutions that are supported uh, historically through the states and increasingly now uh, like private institutions. There's a whole portfolio of community colleges that are designed to link up to their respective communities and be engines of economic development. And now there's an emergent private sector uh, for-profit education that's playing in a variety of different ways as well. So you need to really be talking about the sector uh, that you're focused on when you're talking about what's going on strategically. Secondly, you need to understand that we're in a time given uh, unemployment rates of 8.2% in the United States and, uh, and a global jobs crisis of some magnitude that inevitably there will be a higher level of pressure placed on, placed on the relationship between higher education and the outcomes of good jobs. Uh, and there are large parts of higher education that aren't explicitly focused on the relationship between what they do and good jobs, most specifically the classical liberal arts institutions that are of great value in society, but not as short-term economic engines. So what's the reality? The reality is the overwhelming increase in, uh, in outstanding loans uh, for higher education doesn't come from people taking on increased debt. It comes largely from the explosion of people uh, moving into higher education, many of whom who should not be uh, in four-year institutions, but uh, have used, uh, quite honestly, uh, the advice of others as well as the media uh, to be able to make a choice which takes on material levels of debt not necessarily connected to economic outcomes. So that's number one. Number two, everybody focuses on the list price of higher education. Nobody focuses on the net price of higher education. Here at Babson, for instance, when I look at the tuition paid by our American students, over half of our American students uh, are on need-based financial aid, and that need-based financial aid covers about 40% of the list price of the institution. So uh, it's very easy to celebrate a $55,000 tuition room and board bill, but the reality isn't like that. Number three, a large part of the explosion in loan costs comes from, quite honestly, the disintegration of support for America's public institutions. Uh, we're now 100 years into the evolution of land-grant universities, and the startling decline in support for what they do explains a huge explosion both in tuition at the public institutions and the level of loan support that's required to engage in it. And finally... Uh, some of the less than ethical behavior of folks in the for-profit educational sector has allowed people to discredit the entire higher, edu higher education industry. And the reality is there are problems in every one of those sectors. They are different. There are outstanding examples of organizations that are moving forward in systematic ways, strategically, financially, and organizationally, that give significant discredit to the notion of living in a bubble. So please don't believe what you hear, and let's dig under the covers to understand the underlying dimensions of the problem that face this industry, uh, broadly defined like any other industry you might look at. Thanks for listening.